This is Jared Horak for Today's Racing Digest.com, and my Today's Racing Digest video series continues Saturday, June 9th, 2018. Uh, we're going to do the big race, the Grade 1 Belmont Stakes. It's going to be the 11th race from Belmont Park for three year olds, a mile and a half on the main track. This is going to be our third look at the Belmont. After the Preakness, we did a Preakness recap and early Belmont preview. Last week, uh, we looked at the projected field and, 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 and looked at the horses that we thought were going to go. Now the field's been drawn. There's a 10-horse field for the Belmont Stakes. Uh, and, and let's dive right in. But, but before we get into it, uh, the last couple of weeks, we, we've had good, good results with the videos. The Gold Cup at Santa Anita a couple of weeks back. We had the winner, Exacta, and Trifecta. And then last week, the Connaught Cup from Woodbine, we had the 8-1 to winner and the Exacta. Uh, so we've been on quite a roll recently with these Today's Racing Digest videos. Now let's look at the Belmont Stakes. Ten horse field, obviously number one, justify your, your heavy four to five morning line favorite. He's going for the triple crown in here. Uh, can he be defeated uh, in this race? Now, five of the, the big angles that I look at at the Belmont, uh, and, and the, first, the first one, actually the first couple, uh, kind of go together. Uh, one is horses that, that competed in the Derby and the Preakness typically don't do well in the Belmont stakes. So if you get to that third leg and you've run in those first two and you've run well, uh, they typically struggle. Now, horses that run in the Kentucky Derby and then they run in the Preakness, they typically dominate the Preakness. But the horses that, that have run in the Preakness and then they come to the Belmont, uh, they typically struggle. So since the year 2000, we've seen three horses win the Preakness and the Belmont. Point given for trainer Bob Baffert. Uh, we, uh, we, we saw um, a Fleet Alex do it. And then uh, American Fair won the Triple Crown for trainer Bob Baffert. So Bob Baffert has had a couple horses win the Preakness in Belmont, uh, so that bodes well for Justify's chances there. Uh, but overall, it's typically the horses that they've run in the Derby, and then they didn't hit the board, and then they skipped the Preakness, and they pointed to the Belmont. Those fresh horses that have done well in the past, they have back class, they typically do well uh, in the Belmont Stakes. Now, let's go back prior to the Kentucky Derby, and let's look at the Derby prep races uh, to see if we can find some classy horses that were doing well prior to the, the Triple Crown series. Now, horses that were based in Southern California and, and South Florida, uh, they, had a, they had done well over, on the road to the Kentucky Derby. And some of the key derby preps, obviously the Santa Anita Derby, Justify was the winner. That was one of the fastest Kentucky Derby prep races. A couple other ones that were pretty quick, the Florida Derby, uh, the winner there was Audible. He ended up third in the Kentucky Derby. And then Hofburg, was second. He was clearly second best in there, and he's going to run in the Belmont Stakes. And then the Wood Memorial of Vino Rosso, who was based in, in Florida, and he shipped to, to New York, and he ended up winning the Wood Memorial impressively, and he earned his career best number that day. So those were some of the key derby preps where they earned good Today's Racing Digest numbers, the CPR numbers, uh, the Comprehensive Performance Rating, which takes into account pace, final time, and closing fraction. Uh, you saw the Santa Anita Derby, the Florida Derby, and the Wood Memorial. They all earned quality numbers. So then fast forward to the Kentucky Derby, uh, the first race of the Triple Crown Series. It was contested over a wet track. The field was strung out. The pace was pretty quick. Justify was able to get up there, get the jump on everybody else, and, and, and he was able to put away good magic. And then uh, Audible ended up rallying late, but he was no threat. So Justify was able to dominate that race. And then in the Preakness Stakes, two weeks later, again, a wet track in Baltimore. Uh, this time, the pace was more moderate, and it was good magic. And, and, uh, and Justify, again, they were battling on the pace, but the pace wasn't quick by any stretch of the imagination. Actually, as the day wore on at, at Pimlico, the, the track was playing faster, but the Preakness pace was just moderate. And then finally, Justify was able, in mid-stretch, to emerge as the leader, uh, putting good magic away, and then he's hold, held off Bravazzo. Uh, but the Preakness Stakes was Justify's worst number uh, for today's Racing Digest numbers. In, in his five career starts, the Preakness was his slowest race. So now he comes into the Belmont off of arguably his, his worst career effort, and now he's going to have to jump back up. If he can move his speed figures back up again, uh, like he did in the Santa Anita Derby, obviously he's going to be tough to beat. And in that race, he completely controlled the pace. Now, from the inside post, can he control the pace? Possibly. He could get out there and do that. Free drop Billy number two. He may show a bit of speed. He's, he's got tactical speed. He's been working aggressively. Bravazo can show tactical speed, but he's not as fast as Justify. Restoring Hope is uh, Justify's stable mate. Again, a horse with some speed, but not as quick as Justify. Gronkowski has been running in one-turn synthetic races. Maybe he'll be forwardly placed, but he's not going to be on the lead. 
tenfold for trainer Steve Asmussen. He was third in the Preakness. Maybe he'll show some early foot, uh, at least tactically. Uh, Noble Indy number nine looks like the one uh, that, that could be as quick as justified. His pace ratings have been high, like they were in the Louisiana Derby, where he chased that fast pace. He, he emerged as the leader, the closers were coming, and he was able to fight again. So not only is Noble Indy a horse that can go early, he has some fight in him as well. So if he goes out there with Justify, most likely he's going to hang in there a long time and possibly soften up Justify. But some of the other angles uh, to look for, besides horses that ran in the Derby, skipped the Preakness and ran in the Belmont, and there are four of those actually in here, and we'll mention them, Free Drop Billy, Hofberg, Vino Rosso, and Noble Indy. So those four ran in the Derby, skipped the Preakness, ran in the Belmont. So one of those four could easily win this race. But Bloodlines is, is a big angle in the Belmont Stakes. Horses that are bred to go that mile and a half, not that any of them are ex especially going to excel at a mile and a half, but some, some horses have better pedigrees than others to handle that 12 for a long distance. Hofberg would be one. His sire, uh, his sire and, and the dam sire, uh, both of them uh, have had success uh, in the Belmont. Tappet was his sire, and he sired three Belmont Stakes winners. His dam sire, Touch Gold, won the Belmont Stakes. He spoiled Silver Charms Triple Crown bid. So Hofberg has a lot of stamina influences throughout his pedigree. Vina Rosso is another one. He's related to Commissioner, and for Todd Pletcher, Commissioner was a close second in the Belmont Stakes. Uh, so Vina Rosso, top and bottom, he has some AP Indy stamina. So he has some stamina throughout his pedigree as well. Hofberg with the best mile and a half pedigree, possibly Vina Rosso with the second best. Some other things to look for, horses that ran well at Belmont before. If you've run well at Belmont Park in the past, that's, that's been a good angle. Blended Citizen is the only horse in here that has run, run at Belmont Park, and he won the Grade 3 Peter Pan. Now, Tonalist, back in 2014, he parlayed a Peter Pan victory into a Belmont Stakes victory, spoiling California Chrome's Triple Crown bid. Uh, so Blended Citizen is one. He's done well at the track. And he's also the only entrant among the ten horses that is coming off of a career best speed rating. So his, his last out number was his best of his career, so he certainly seems to be on the improve. And then finally, horse uh, jockeys and trainers that have done well in the Belmont in the past. Uh, that's a good angle, and we have a lot of those. Justify uh, has uh, Mike Smith and Bob Baffert. They've, they've won the Belmont multiple times. Bravazzo for T. D. Wayne Lucas. He saddled four Belmont winners. Hofberg, jockey and trainer, have won the Belmont. Uh, Restoring Hope is another Baffert trainee. Uh, Gronkowski, his rider, Jose Ortiz, has won the Belmont before. Tenfold, trainer Steve Asmussen, he settled creator to win the Belmont. Vino Rosso has strong connections. John Velasquez with a couple Belmont wins. His trainer, Todd Pletcher, he's won the Belmont three times. And then he also saddles Nubal Indian here. Uh, so those are some of the connections that have done well. Uh, so overall, uh, it's Justify's race if he runs back to his Santa Anita Derby. If he is able to do that and get out there and control the pace, he could be tough to beat. If he does not run back to that race and he just runs the, the way he did in the Preakness, he's not going to win, most likely. Someone else is going to win. And then the most likely horses to win, if that happens, will be Hofberg with that strong pedigree. He also can go back to the Florida Derby for that strong CPR number he earned that day for the Digest. And then Vino Rosso, your Wood Memorial winner, could certainly bounce back for Todd Pletcher. We've seen Todd Pletcher do this multiple times where his horses ran in the Derby, and then he never brings horses back in two weeks. He skips the Preakness. Then he comes into the Belmont and his horses run well. So Vino Rosso and Noble Indy would fit that mold. And then if you're looking for a horse that has done well at Belmont Park in the past, that's improving, blended citizen, uh, could be your Belmont horse. So those are the main contenders. Justify the one to beat. He's going for the Triple Crown, but he's not going to offer any value. If, if you're looking to try to beat him, most likely the winner is going to be Hofberg, Vino Rosso, possibly a blended citizen. But we've seen some weird things happen in the Belmont as well. A Datara with a, with a bomb win, Sarava. Uh, so basically, you know, some of these, someone could jump up and run a big race and just surprise everybody. Uh, we'll have to see how it all plays out. But if you're interested in my full card analysis for Belmont Park for Saturday, June 9th, including all of my wagering strategies and extensive coverage of the Belmont Stakes, uh, you can find that at todaysracingdigest.com. Also, if you're interested in the complete digest, for Belmont Park, for Belmont Day, tons of information from the, from the Complete Digest. You have your fire number, speed throughout a race, your comprehensive performance rating from the Digest, exclusive Digest numbers with uh, analysis from their handicappers, uh, workout analysis, so much information in that Complete Digest. 
for all 13 races from Belmont Park. And you can find that along with my analysis at todaysracingdigest.com. And that will wrap up this video. We'll be back next week with another stakes race from around the country.